All right, in this video, another field craft. This is going to be movement as a company of guerrilla soldiers or a company of militia. Now, this is primarily an administrative move, and it will be of the three march types, which are traveling, traveling overwatch, bounding overwatch. This is more of a traveling overwatch. But pattern your formation essentially like it is a movement to contact with your own logistics because you're operating in enemy territory. Even if that territory is friendly to you, the enemy can hit you at any moment. Now the unit formation that I have here is three rifle platoons of three squads one heavy weapons section which we'll say is uh, equipped with two 81 millimeter mortars we have a headquarters quote unquote platoon with the new recruits with them if there are any casualties that are litter bound they're going to be part of your company's combat trains now, first off, we got our lead platoon up here in front of them. We will have at least one group of scouts. These scouts must operate at least as two-man or four-man teams. Hopefully, you have a scout section, a part of your headquarters. These are people that are essentially dedicated to LERP-type duties, long-range reconnaissance patrol duties. So they'll be out scouting in front of us, say 100 meters, maybe more. We have our lead platoon here, which will be traveling in primarily or kind of like a triangle shape. Squad on each flank here in our wedge, and then we'll have the trail squad, which will be kind of broken up zigzag back here that can shift wherever is needed. We also have flankers on the sides. This must be fire team size and they move anywhere that's needed towards the back, towards the front or a little bit in front of the formation to check for any potential enemy ambushes and any uh, booby traps that the scouts may have missed if they get pushed up ahead. 50 to 100 meters behind them or 25 meters depending on the terrain that will be up you know the uh, distances will be determined by your company commander you will have your second squad with one squad on each flank and essentially platoon column is what I have here and then in the center they're going to have the combat trains for first platoon and second platoon so first platoons will be in the lead Second platoon behind them, roughly one squad's worth in here, about. Now the flankers, they're going to be kicked out, one fire team from second, one fire team from third. So the remainder, maybe a little bit of help from these squads over here, will be associated with carrying the combat trains. And then, remember, rotate them out, take one of these squads from the flank here, push them in, take this batch that's doing it, put them off to the side, and then when the team that's doing it gets tired, then we grab the other squad and they just keep switching back and forth here so that people have time to rest. Don't forget your flankers, it would not hurt to call them in every periodically. Swap it out with one team that's on your combat trains. 50 to 100 meters back from the second platoon, you'll have your headquarters, heavy weapons, and pretty much anyone else. I got them as kind of a diamond formation here with the combat trains in the center. And I have notes as to who's supposed to do what duties, which we'll get into. And then 50 to 100 meters behind them is our third platoon. And I did them as a diamond back here with one squad on this flank, one squad on this flank. 
And the remaining squat is kind of filtered out up in here. You know, potentially we'll probably be looking at more of a V. Remember, their combat trans here is just for this platoon, so it might only be one or two stretchers or sleds or carts. Now some notes I got in here. Engineers, if you have any engineers, have one team or squad is right behind the lead platoon. Mixed up with these guys in here. Their job is to clear any landmines or booby traps you come across. The remainder of the engineer element will be located back with the headquarters section, headquarters platoon, to assist them with moving the combat trains, the company's combat trains. Heavy weapons, they are secondary for the people to do for the combat trains, but obviously they will do their rotations on it. People with the actual weapons will be in the center with the unit's logistics. People that still have just the rifles, they're not the ones humping the tubes, humping the, humping the base plates, humping the uh, bipods. They are part of the security around the headquarters element. Your recruits, these, this is the primary pool you will draw from for humping your combat trains, your company logistics, and also assisting with carrying any casualties. Obviously you would need at least one medic with those casualties during movement. With an additional medic up near the first platoon for just in case. The company first sergeant is in charge of the combat trains, he will be located in here. Remember, rotate the people on combat trains, your logistics, because they're going to get tired carrying that extra weight. Now your company commander, forgot to mention this, he will be located either in here with this headquarters element or he may locate himself up in here with the second squad. Your company XO will either be back here with your rear guard or if the company commander moves up, he will move up in with the headquarters element in here. Air defense, if you have any man pads. Stingers, SA-16s, anything like that, have at least one team with your main logistics trains. First off, your company, and then I would say up here with this larger one here up in second platoon. Those are easier targets to see. Drones. Any drones that you have should be with the company headquarters. If they are needed, a team will be dispatched by the commander if he agrees to move forward, link up with that lead platoon or back to the rear to the third platoon, wherever is needed. They will then launch the drone to check out the uh, area of interest. Remember, drones should not be sent directly in. Take a circuitous route coming in from the side or from behind. Check your target. Take a different way out that the drone took coming in and circle its way back in towards the platoon. Treetop level as much as possible. Try to uh, mess up anyone who's tracking it by sight. Drones should only be used with the approval of either the executive officer or the company commander, whoever can be reached and is in charge of that element at that time. If the company commander is up front, we got a battle going on up there, 
Well, that drone approval may have to go to the executive officer. Platoon sergeants are always in charge of the combat trains in the platoons, the unit's logistics. And that is all the notes I have written up. This is just one idea. Tailor this to what you have available. Obviously, the vast majority of militias out there aren't going to be able, aren't going to be large enough to do something like this. Take ideas from this, modify it to suit your needs. When I was writing this up, I was thinking of more mid-war period. Unit is larger, more people. If you're going to do this, you know, early in the war, you don't have that many people, well then take a standardized squad formation or standardized platoon formation, modify it for your needs. Now you're probably saying, why do I need combat trains? Why do I need to carry logistics with me? It's because you do not have the logistical support a conventional military does. And you will never have enough caches out there in the locations you need them at every given time. You are going to be transporting a lot of stuff with you, which means bulk carry. Porter teams, sled teams, cart teams. Now, if you go the route of ATVs and dirt bikes and that stuff, well, remember, you also have to supply your POL products for those vehicles. Petroleums, oils, lubricants, your gasoline, your motor oils, maybe hydraulic fluids, I don't know, whatever you need for the particular vehicle you have. And then also spare parts, spare tires, spare fan belts, you get the idea. This is just something I threw together quickly. Like I said, modify it to suit your needs and your capabilities. The more wide open a terrain is, the more you extend out your formations. You put in extra spacing between your platoons and extra spacing between your people on the ground in those platoons. The more dense the terrain is, the more closed in it is, you usually drop those distances down. Now, moving at night. Always going to be difficult, and you're probably going to want to think about having some type of markers on your people, at least at the front of your formations and your flanks. Everyone has to know what's going on at all times. They need to have as much info as possible as to we're going this direction. We're going to take a turn here at this location, this distance, going this way, and then we're going to turn here, going this way. It's not uncommon that at night, because it's easier to control, you will collapse down into essentially a column or maybe even into a single file formation, even in big wide spread open areas. It depends on how much night vision you have and identification you have available to you at night. You can get away with taking chemical lights, leaving them in the wrappers, snapping them, shaking them, taking a knife, just slitting the wrapper a little bit, opening it up just a little bit, and then putting it in a band on the back of the helmet or taping it or attaching it to the back of a rucksack so that you can see, hey, that's that person in front of me. I know that they're X number of people ahead or they're supposed to be on my flank over here. Practice night movements before you actually have to rely on them. It, it's, it's a nightmare and it will take you a lot longer than you think to move anywhere. Avoid wide open spaces. 
such as grasslands, prairies, deserts, and that type of stuff. If you have to move across those areas, do it at night, do it in an extended formation. Everyone spread out. Remember your IR signature. You don't want a drone or an aircraft flying overhead, picking up all those little heat signatures on the ground. So maybe that's when you're gonna take that uh, Mylar space blanket thing and you're gonna put it over the top of you kind of like a poncho and you'll put some foliage over that so that you can drop down on the ground quickly, you know, turtle yourself if an aircraft goes overhead. Now for all my engineer brothers and the Patriot Militia Movements, always remember SAONs.